Darren, hi, how's it going? So good, how are you? Good. What a week this must be for you. Oh yeah, it's been crazy. You got a lot, a lot going on. Um, I wanted to start off with your show because never have I ever, um, I've seen all 10 episodes. We kind of did, um, when they were sent, it was five and then five. Mm. And I, I've got to say throughout, I, I think it's, I think it's your best season to date. I think that really you knocked it out of the park in season three. And I'm so fascinated to hear what you have to say about Ben's journey this year. Can you kind of I, walk me through the season a bit? Ben's gone on quite a journey this season. And I think that it's so multidimensional and complex, but I think that it really deals with the theme of pressure. I think that Ben is a bit of a pressure cooker at times. And, and you kind of been seeing him like boiling up about college. And it's really been this long running arc and then it gets to the point where like, he has so much pressure built up inside of him that he has to go to the hospital because he hasn't had time to poop in 16 days. <laughs> so it really does get to him mentally and physically. But I think that the really interesting thing about Ben and, and pressure this season is that he does like start on this journey of vulnerability and like trying to realize that like his best is all he can do. And especially like he gets to talk to Paxton in, in episode six, which is like a super special scene. And it was so great to be able to work with Darren, who's like so natural and grounded and such a fantastic talent. And that scene, like Paxton says to Ben, like, if I was your dad, I'd be proud of you. And that kind of starts Ben's wheels turning. And then when he does hear from his father, played by Michael Badaluco, who is incredible, that he is proud of him, you just see like this massive weight kind of go off of Ben's shoulders. And then it allows him to kind of explore new interests. It allows him to get into art class and to meet Margot. And although he does like revert a little bit back to some of his like Ben isms where he's like name dropping and like hurling insults and things, he does kind of allow himself to take a second, see that pair for what it really is and kind of like relish in some of that chaos and imperfection, which I think is what he needs to focus on. And then the other thing is like relationship pressures. Ben's trying to navigate his his feelings for Davey while, you know, we definitely saw it at the end of season two with that cliffhanger, while also trying to be a good boyfriend for Anissa, which he obviously doesn't turn out to be so good at because he's so hung up on these feelings that he has for Davey. And, and he feels like a tremendous amount of pressure to like navigate this new friendship. And like, how do you go about like being there for someone who is actively in a relationship and also like kind of sabotaging that themselves and and Ben really is trying to like figure out how he can like be a good friend and and like navigate through those situations so there is so much going on for Ben and it really especially at the end of the season and that cliffhanger which I'm sure we'll talk about but mm. that leading into season four along with this amazing season and this solo episode like I'm just so excited for Ben and his journey and I know that there is so much to go and especially since we filmed season four, I mean, mm. you guys are not ready. I'm telling you. Mm. No, I can't <laughs> wait for that. So we'll take it back for season three. I think the Ben is full of shit episode was definitely a highlight <laughs> of the first five. That was one of the ones I had grabbed onto. Yeah. And then also a Ben uh, spotlight episode again. Once yeah. once more with, with um, Andy Samberg as the narrator who... Hopefully by now you've had a chance to meet and it's still, if not, let's get that going. I mean, if you've got the connection, you let me know. Cause I am a huge Sandberg fan and I would love to meet him. I think that he's like a genius and so brilliant and talented. And I've heard he's like the nicest human being. So I would love to meet him. I haven't gotten the chance yet, but I'm just really grateful that he was willing to be the voice in my head for a second year. And like, that's, that's awesome that he was he was willing to do that because he's so funny and like everything he says I'm like oh my god yes I love this and I thought that was such an incredible episode too because as I said it was so Ben focused you know yeah. to have an episode in which Davy makes maybe a brief appearance as well but it doesn't change the the thread of the show I thought it yeah. was integrated and seamless so well what was it like to film this past the third season 
He was incredible. I mean, this third season is so like heartwarming and witty and beautiful. And and the writers and Mindy and Lang did such an unbelievable job about like finding different pockets that we haven't explored yet for these characters and like their journeys. And, and I think that there's something for everybody in this third season, whether your favorite character is Ben or Davey or Fabiola or Eleanor or even like Trent, you know, there is something that you can get excited about for this third season and you can watch them really experience a lot. And and I feel like sometimes there are these really big ups and downs and it's so representative of real life and it's so relatable. And what I love is like our show has such multidimensional characters that explore their intersectionality so well, where like, you know, no matter what they're going through, if, if it is these complex themes or or ideas, like that's not just who they are. Like Ben isn't just about pressure. You know, he's also has so much underneath him and vulnerability and like desire for love and affection. And, and you know, Eleanor isn't just about like uh, drama. Like she she's also yeah. navigating this new relationship and like how how it is to like interact with with her mom and like all this kind of stuff. And it's so fun to be able to watch that. And as a fan, like I'm a fan of the show. I love getting to see these characters go through like such growth and like such amazing moments. I cannot wait for people to see this third season. And I, I'm so happy that you think it's our best because I, I mean, I do too. Granted, since we filmed the fourth season, I don't want to be so bold, but I do think that the fourth season is even better, which is like, if you can even believe that, I know it's like already up here, but I mean, this show is just so special. I'm just so grateful to be a part of it where it does keep getting better, which is crazy because a lot of times that doesn't happen, but it is happening for our show. And I'm so excited to see the fan reactions and and hear what everyone thinks because it really is amazing. One of the things I think you do so well this season is the idea of growth that, you know, Ben grows, but also there's arcs that go through. You know, when I'm watching a sort of a modified binge, like a five and five, it just feels like you go through a lot through the course of those episodes. So, you know, when you're looking at the season, do you do you know exactly how it's going to go at the beginning? We don't. We kind of start maybe a week or two before we get like the maybe the first or second episodes. And then as we go along, we do like table reads midway through. We'll like have lunch and it'll be a shorter lunch. We'll do a, a table read for 30 minutes and then we'll eat and then we go back to work. So we're kind of finding out as we go, which I think is actually really special because it keeps you on your toes. And then it allows you to kind of like experience what these characters are going through with spontaneity and authenticity, which I think is really important in terms of honesty and like really creating like these characters that you love so much is like at its core, it has to be honest. And when we like don't have time to like, know the the arc because they're still working on these scripts and they're still modifying them and writing like as we shoot so it is really fun at least for me as an actor to be able to like kind of be surprised and then I'm a fan where I'm getting a new script and I'm like oh my gosh what's gonna happen here and then I'm like reading it and and I'm texting my castmates and we're all getting excited and predicting things for the future so I really love that we have the ability to do that and then you finally get to episode 10 and you're clamoring for the fourth season to be able to read the rest of them, you know? Mm -hmm. Maybe let's break the season down into three parts. Even though it's not quite done that way, I'd be curious to hear your impression. We'll start it off maybe with um, Ben and Anissa because when the season starts, they're together and it explores that relationship. Um, and certainly I think, you know, Megan has a really interesting arc of her own this year as Anissa. So what did you like about those early episodes and working with her and that relationship. I love that it's bumpy because again, like I want to watch shows that are representative of real life. I don't want to see like mushiness and, and like everything being perfect because like, as Mindy says, like that's boring. You don't, that's, that's not representative. Like you're, then you're like, okay, like you need some conflict and you need to sometimes recognize that like these two people are great people, but they're not necessarily great together. Like, Ben and Anissa don't quite fit. And I think that they recognize that. And Megan is such a fantastic actress and she's so giving and, and so talented that like those scenes are so much fun, especially when like they're kind of butting heads a little bit because you need that. And then watching her go through her arc with, with Fabiola and like finding herself and diving more into that, she does such an incredible job and her and Lee on screen my God, like yeah. it's so great. I love, love watching them because they both have like such a very rich tone and they're both very subtle and like 
so nuanced in their performances that like watching them do scenes together is so electrifying and it's so sweet and and beautiful. And I love that they got the chance to do those because like as a fan, I love those, you know? So it's it's just really great. The The whole cast and crew is just filled with so many talented people. Like it literally blows my mind every time. So maybe we'll call the middle section Ben as single guy, Ben figuring out himself. Yeah, I think it's- The Ben it's, and Paxton uh, it's, scenes that you touched on are really interesting because, you know, often the fans want to sort of put you against each other. And the scenes that you have together, I just realized, you know, Jaren and Darren, you've got really interesting uh, dynamic there too. Yeah, I loved, that was honestly one of my favorite scenes of the entire series. Even having shot season four, getting to work with Darren was incredible. Like he, he's a brilliant actor and like, he's so easy to work with because he gives you so much to play around with. He does things so many different ways and like puts in like little pockets of things that you can jump onto as an actor and Kabir Akhtar, who was the director of, of 306, like we talked a lot about that scene because both of these young men are going through difficult times mm -hmm. and watching them open up to each other and having them not even necessarily be close friends, but like, it's so important to be able to like showcase those types of scenes because I think that like a lot of times, like we have this like toxically masculine culture where we're not talking about when we need help and, and when we're struggling and, and we need to do that because being able to lean on somebody is going to help you solve these issues. And, and it reminds you that like, you're not alone and watching these two characters that are sometimes loud and brash or popular and cool open up about their deep set insecurities is really special. And I really hope that like it ignites some difficult conversations from the young men and men in general, or, or anybody that watches our show that they recognize that it's okay to talk and it's okay to open up and to ask for help because everybody needs that. You know, like in, in my own life, like my roommates are my best confidants and I go to them with everything. And it's been really hard for me to like journey into being able to do that, but they're so accepting. And, and the same goes for when they have issues and like, I can talk about it with them and, and give them advice. Like that's really what's pushing us to grow. So Ben and Paxson being able to do that for each other solves a lot of issues, you know, and, and it really like kind of catapults each other on a separate journey towards self-love and acceptance and I'm so proud and happy with how that scene turned out and like the writing again was like so brilliant to be able to piece that together it's such a special scene and, and I have so much gratitude for being able to do it and then lastly Ben and Davy, baby and it's hiding in plain sight too you don't know <laughs> what's going on this year and then you get wow that what the way you were able to do that was astounding yeah. Yeah. It's such a special relationship that the two of them have. And again, just have to give so much credit to the writing because it is so nuanced. And although it might be hiding in plain sight, it's still like hits you like a truck, especially mm. when you see that last moment, you're like, oh my God. But even still, we love a good cliffhanger and never have I ever. And we have no idea what happens. Well, I might, but we have fans have no idea what happens after that moment when that door closes, like did they? Did they not? You're going to have to find out season four. But I just, I love Ben and Davey's arc, uh, especially looking at where they were in season one. And then now at season three, they've grown so much together. And I'm just so proud of them. Like you get connected to these characters. And again, like I'm a fan, I'm a fan of the show and I want them to do well. And I know that they have a lot to go and they're still learning a heck of a lot about each other, but they're learning what each other needs and how to interact with each other. And although they make each other crazy at times, it is really special getting to watch them do what they do. I gotta ask you one last thing. This week, you wrapped the show. Finished on Wednesday, junk it on Thursday. Here we are Friday. Did you take anything from the set? Oh yeah, my, my favorite thing that I took I had a copy of episode 410, the series finale. Mm -hmm. And I had everybody on the cast and the crew, pre post-production, everybody that could signed it. And they wrote like little notes because one of my favorite parts about this show is the people. It's the people that I get to work with and create the show with. It's the fans and the people that love this show. And I just felt like it would be the perfect sort of heartwarming memento to be able to take back home and remember forever that like, I can have all of these people that I worked with that are my lifelong friends. And it's on these pages that mean so much to so many people around the world, no matter who they are or where they come from or what their intersectionality might be. 
getting to have that, I felt like fully encapsulated the spirit of Never Have I Ever and its fans and just the people that are involved in the show and love it. And I haven't opened it yet because I don't think that I'm ready to like ball my eyes out. But whenever I decide that I'm ready for a good cry, I'm going to open it and get to read notes from everybody. And it's going to be really special. And I'm going to keep that forever. Oh, yeah, it must have hit you a lot. I mean, you're talking about season four for a viewer as a participant in it. Boy, yeah. it must have been such incredible. Maybe we'll do this again for season four. Who knows? I'm ready. I just wanted to say how much I enjoyed, again, hearing from you, speaking with you. I didn't run out of questions like I thought. I didn't get to, I didn't want to just ask my same questions again. I wanted to have all new ones and you were so incredible at answering them. So thank you so much. I really appreciate you. It's been awesome.